Hi everyone, nice seeing you again and thank you for joining us. We are going to be talking today about a very important topic, not just today, but in general and always in the, in the beauty industry. And that is the topic of salon hygiene and infection control. I know that all of you are doing a great job and have implemented all kinds of great strategies to limit the spread of infections in your salon and incorporating all the guidelines you receive from your local health authority with, with respect to salon sanitation and salon hygiene. I thought it would be a good opportunity to just review some of the concepts because we can honestly never know too much about this, this specific topic. And what we're gonna do today is divide the discussion into three sections. First of all, we're just going to be reviewing some of the terminology as it relates to infection control. Secondly, we're going to see how those things come into play in the salon environment and specifically at the manicure station. And thirdly, we will uh, talk a little bit more about how things might change going forward uh, in, in the steps that we might have to implement as we are trying to open up our salons in the future. One thing that is really important to remember is that infection control and infection uh, prevention strategies differ from different health um, public health authorities. So something that might be uh, totally required in a salon in Canada might be very different from something that is totally required in a salon in the ne Netherlands. However, some of the basic principles hold true no matter where you live and those are the things that we will be focusing on. I encourage you to contact your local health authority and ask them for their input um, in this matter so that your salon can meet all the, the, the criteria that is necessary in your specific region. We'll start off with a general review of some of the terminology as it relates to salon hygiene. The first one I want to talk about is infection control and what it actually means. Well, infection control is the steps we are taking in our environment to reduce the li or limit the spread of microbes. What are microbes? Microbes are bacteria, viruses, fungi, those things that are sitting on surfaces and are basically making them contaminated. And infection control refers to all the things we can do in to decontaminate surfaces or the implements that we are using. The first level of disinfection is sanitation, which is essentially cleaning. And cleaning is something we do all the time. We do it around our houses. We are wiping down countertops and, and doorknobs and you know cleaning washrooms. And those are all things accomplished by sanitation. Sanitation typically involves washing of things. So soap and water, hand washing with soap and water is a form of sanitation. After the service, you'll start off by taking your equipment that you've used, your stainless steel equipment, and washing it with soap and water and maybe a scrub brush to remove all the organic material and the nail defiling dust um, that is on the surface of those implements. If you do not take the step to remove organic material, you can't actually sufficiently uh, clean and disinfect the equipment that you have used. The second level of infection control is called a disinfection. Disinfection is what we're doing uh, to attempt to actually kill or destroy the microorganism that might be on the surface. In order to kill or destroy a microorganism, you actually need something quite a little bit more than hand washing with soap and water, you need a chemical disinfectant. And there are chemical disinfectants that are based on different uh, ingredients, different technologies. For example, there are ones that are based on chlorine bleach or uh, hydrogen peroxide, quaternary ammonia, uh, phenolics, etc. There are a wide variety of ones to choose from and there are different considerations in which one you might be going with. One of your considerations might be based on what is the acceptable a disinfecting chemi uh, chemical uh, that is used in your region or recommended by your health authority. Uh, second, you might have uh, to rely on getting proper training for it. So most of the disinfection lines actually provide a short course that you can either take through an educator or you can take it online and um, completing the course and actually printing up a certificate at the end of it. Um, 
The important thing to remember with chemical disinfectants is that they have to adhere to certain criteria, and these criteria might be different for different people. So for me, it's very important that the disinfectant has a relatively quick contact time. So for example, in order for the disinfectant to do its job, it has to be wet on a surface for a specified amount of time so that it can actually get into whatever microbe is trying to attack and attack it and kill it. It means that the surface has to stay wet for that period of time and it means that you cannot use that surface for that amount of time. So if you go with a, a disinfectant that needs to stay moist on a surface for 30 minutes for it to do its job, that is not really good if you are trying to use your manicure station for the next client. So I always look for disinfectants that work really uh, fairly quickly. So for example, you would go with one that can do its job in three minutes. I want to know that I'm working with a, a, a chemical that is safe, um, that doesn't require me to wear extensive protective equipment or have strong vapors um, or as an eye irritant or a respiratory irritant. You want to go with ones that have a limited amount of negative effects on the environment. So for example, if you are using um, a chemical disinfectant that requires you to dispose of it in a very specific way, so you can't just pour it um, down the drain or, uh, or deactivate it and then, then dispose of it. Those are huge considerations because we are not trying, we do not want to put things into the environment that is actually harmful to the environment. We also want to go with one that's easy to use. So if you have a disinfectant that requires very tricky dilutions, that is already um, more difficult to use. You also have to remember which day that you diluted on and how many days have you been using it for and then you have to remember to actually when to get rid of it. Um, a lot of health authorities actually require you to take, keep a log of your disinfectant um, reagent and make sure that you are disposing it and diluting it in the correct way. So that is sort of the idea of disinfectants. The third and highest level of uh, infection control is called sterilization. And that can be accomplished either by an autoclave, you could also do it with um, a, still with a solution uh, called a chemical sterilant. And sterilization is not something that we typically need for service that we, services that we provide in the nail industry. So if you are um, working in other sectors that um, where you use equipment that will pierce the, the skin, for example, you will have to have a really good mechanism in place to do uh, sterilization. However, in the nail industry, do know that there are some times when we um, might nick a client's uh, cuticle and then you have uh, potentially blood on a cuticle nipper that then pushes that implement into the highest level of disinfection because it has had co um, come in contact with, um, with blood. And the only way you could clean that is actually by putting it through um, a chemical sterilant or an autoclave, for example. So to recap, the three different top, the three different terms that we talked about is sanitation, which is basically cleaning, and the aim is just to reduce the number of microbes on a surface. The second, highest level of infection control is disinfection and it is uh, to actually start killing microbes that are on the surface of things. So, um, and the third highest level, the most stringent one, is uh, sterilization and the aim is to destroy bacterial spores which is tougher than anything else that we've discussed to destroy. So for the second part of this talk, we're actually going to have a look at how all of this infection protocol will play out in the salon at the nail station. So imagine your client has just left and you are left with the station to, um, to sanitize and disinfect and get it ready for the next person to sit down. First of all, when you do nail services, you can typically, typically divide everything that's in front of you into three categories. There will be the disposables, the non-disposables, and the surfaces. And each one of those categories will be treated in a different way. First of all, what qualifies as a disposable? Well, anything that is porous and it will absorb water cannot be fully cleaned because you could never really immerse this in a solution and expect the solution to get inside a nail file or a buffer and clean it up appropriately. So anything that is a disposable or a porous item, we will either give these to the client to use at home or they will go into the wastebasket. Same time, we can get rid of any paper towel, nail wipe, 
uh, orange wood sticks and dispose of them. Next up are the stainless steel implements that you've used. The first step to, disinf uh, to disinfection of, of these kinds of implements would be washing or sanitation. So we have to get rid of all the nail dust and the organic matter, the dead pieces of skin that's stuck onto this equip this uh, implements. And we do that by washing them in soap and water and a scrub brush and make sure they're completely clean. If they are not completely clean, the disinfecting solution cannot do its job. It ha you have to have it completely clean before it goes into the um, sanitizing jar. So this actually works really great, very easy to use. The size of the implements that we're using makes it perfect. So my implements can go into the glass jar and you will add the chemical um, disinfectant to the jar. In this case, we're going to be using uh, CS20, which means that it has to make contact with the implements in the jar for 20 minutes. And it has to be exactly 20 minutes. Uh, if you're going over 20 minutes, you might actually damage the stainless steel implements by causing them to start corroding. So it's very important to put them in there, set a timer, come back after 20 minutes and, and deal with them appropriately. The, what's left are the surfaces. So that includes our nail lamp, any bottles, or solutions, anything that you had on the table that is your stock that you're going to be putting back and, and using for a future client, and then also the surface of the nail station. To properly disinfect those areas, you have two options. You can use a, sanit a disinfecting wipe or a disinfecting spray. And again, this is from the same line, same um, stringent criteria would be hospital grade um, in, in certain uh, jurisdictions. In the case of all disinfection agents, they are chemicals and you should be using gloves when you are um, working with them. Remember that disinfectants cannot go onto skin. They're only meant for non-living uh, and, and non-porous uh, surfaces. So in the case of the lamp, you would use a wipe, clean up the exterior of the lamp, if your lamp's base plate can come off like our special lamp, you can disinfect the lamp and then clear the entire table and do a disinfection step with either the spray or the wipe of the entire manicure station. Very important to remember that you have to be faithful to the contact time. So for example, this specific brand's a disinfectant wipe, you have to wipe the surface and it, the surface has to stay moist for three minutes in order for it, the, the solution to do its job. So make sure it has three minute wet contact time. And that is, uh, is great, uh, sort of the easy step-by-step -step to clean up your nail station. When you are finished, use the tent cart that comes with the system or a visual um, aid and place it on the station, indicating that it's been sanitized. This one says, um, according to the Canadian Infection Control Guidelines, this station has been properly cleaned and disinfected. And it's a great um, way to signal to your clients that you're taking steps to, to clean the, the environment that she's gonna be in and your station is ready for the next guest. So far, we've discussed the different terminology as it relates to salon infection, how you can actually put it into practice at the manicure station. And now we're gonna talk a little bit about things that might have to change in the future with respect to how we do things. We are all really eager to learn from governments and regulatory agencies when we can open up to see clients again and also the different steps that are gonna be needed for us to open up. And we don't really know what that looks like yet and more information I'm sure will emerge in the near future. And again, it's going to be very dependent on where you live. I know that we all have taken sanitation and uh, infection control principles as part of our training when we first became estheticians and nail technicians and cosmetologists. And we are already doing all the great things. So everything we've talked to up to this point is really standard procedure. And we should be doing all those things. You know, clients should be washing their hands before they sit down at your station. You should be washing your hands between each person. And all this, this infection control steps that we've discussed really is just review. We are already doing all of those things. What we are dealing with now is actually preparing ourselves for how we are going to make ourselves feel comfortable working on clients in the future, and how are we gonna make our clients feel comfortable coming to see us at our salons? I think some of the things that might change in the future 
is that maybe in the past we would do a good sanitation of the salon at the end of the day, wiping down doorknobs, point of sale terminals, light switches, um, the washrooms. And I think in the future, we might have to do those things much more frequently. We might even have to do it after each appointment. To accommodate for that, we are going to have to do our bookings a little bit differently. You might have to add an extra 15 minutes in between clients to accommodate for doing those steps. You might have to stagger your appointments so that you um, never have overlap of clients. You never have people sitting in a, in a waiting room. If there are, guide, if there are specific guidelines in place uh, by the government that said you can only have 10 people in a, in a space at any given time, then you ha you're gonna have to figure out how to avoid um, situations of what would, would, what would amount to overcrowding. We are also probably going to have to adopt uh, another level of uh, personal protective equipment, which is actually quite difficult to do at this point because there is a huge demand on those resources um, that are obviously being directed to the healthcare industry at this point. And I know that a lot of technicians have already been using gloves. They are talking about potentially using a second pair of gloves so that anything that a glove, a pair of gloves that have become contaminated will be able to be removed and you will still have gloves on your hands. Masks, very important. I think we will have to limit the spread of infection um, or potential infection by droplets and aerosols by wearing masks or in the case of the nail technician, perhaps a face shield. In the case of the, the salon guest, definitely a mask. And then I, will, I can imagine that we will have to adopt a certain level of um, aseptic procedure and uh, preventing cross-contamination of surfaces and products and, and so forth. So I can see that in the future, we might have to have a very minimalistic um, sort of nail station where you know that everything that was on your desk will have to be put through an infection control process to clean it up afterwards so that you probably will only have on the station the things that you're going to be needing for that specific service. So this has sort of been an overview of infection control. It is a huge topic. Um, it's, a, it's a topic that with respect to how we implement changes will have to be addressed constantly and we'll see a lot of changes in the future. But I hope that I've provided you with some background information and some review information that you will find useful and that you will be able to accommodate or in incorporate into your salon and to give yourself some level of peace of mind and also to give your your salon guests some peace of mind. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon.